My name is Keith Cressman. I'm the Senior Desert Locust Forecasting Officer at FAO Headquarters in Rome, Italy. Today I'm going to talk to you briefly about using um, new innovative tools that have been developed by FAO for countries in order to monitor desert locusts as part of the early warning um, strategy and program. So let's get started. Uh, first, I would just like to, to start um, by, by reminding everyone of the, um, the scale uh, and the size of the problem that we must face with desert locusts. So desert locusts, as you know, inhabit the, mainly the desert areas stretching from West Africa to India, um, north of the equator and, and south of the Mediterranean. This huge area represents about 20% of the Earth's land surface, and most of it's very remote, very little infrastructure, very little internet, and often not very safe. During um, most years, there's about 25 frontline countries that must face desert locusts every year. And these frontline countries have well-established nas national locust programs, and they have teams that go out to the desert looking for green vegetation, for locust infestations, and if they come across large ones, then they treat them. Now, during, um, let's say, years that are not so calm, years where we have very good rainfall conditions, good um, breeding conditions, uh, then we can have outbreaks that can lead to upsurges if they're not controlled and that can lead to plagues if those upsurges are not controlled. And in these cases, uh, the situation um, in terms of the countries that are affected um, can expand from not just 25 frontline countries, but an additional 25 uh, invasion countries. And as you can see on the map, the, the locusts um, get into these countries, um, moving southwards, moving to the north, and moving um, further east. So to stop all of this from happening, um, all of the countries have adopted a preventive control strategy. And this strategy relies on monitoring and early warning to detect the first signs that locust numbers might be increasing. And if that can be done successfully, then uh, uh, we should be able to prevent upsurges and plagues it doesn't mean that we can prevent outbreaks, but it means that we can uh, respond to them quickly um, to, uh, to control them before they expand into something much worse. So I want to really focus now on this idea of, of early warning and the importance of, of such. But let's, let's go back a little bit um, in, in time. And here you can see uh, a graph um, basically of about the last hundred years, showing you um, technological um, innovations and developments. And if you look on the on kind of the, the, the left um, side of the graph, you'll notice that there's really not much um, going on. Um, there is no information technology, of course, um, until about the 1990s, um, very little outreach, um, associated, of course, with that information technology, um, not again until about the 1990s. Um, uh, no computer modeling uh, really was done before the 1990s, um, and uh, remote sensing um, imagery and, and satellites weren't really used until about the 1980s. Of course, we have been communicating, though, throughout these hundred years, but that, that has evolved, hasn't it, from, from telex to facsimile to, of course, email and internet that we have now. But the point I want to make here is if we look towards the right-hand side of the graph, you see a lot of kind of bars, a lot of innovations going on in those five categories. And most of that has occurred, in fact, in the past um, decade or two. And a substantial amount of those new innovations um, have occurred in the last couple of years. And this is what I will focus on. Um, during the remainder of this presentation. Also, just to remind you a little bit of the history and FAO's role in, in uh, global monitoring, early warning, and forecasting, you can see 
that we um, basically have been working on this for the past 70 years. And around uh, the late 1970s, FAO assumed full operational responsibility for providing the global early warning and the forecasts to each affected country, um, to the donors, and to the global community. And this is a very unique role, of course, that FAO plays that nobody else um, um, does at the moment. So let's talk about these 16 innovations that have um, basically been developed in the last two years, which corresponded um, to the locus upsurge. And someone might understand there's a very good reason for this. When we have desert locus upsurges and emergencies, of course, there's extra funding available to help realize new innovations. In the last upsurge, 2003 to 2005, some 15 years ago, we had one innovation. That was something called e-locust. This um, upsurge, we've seen we've had 16 innovations. And that's due to very successful partnering with um, uh, players um, in the private sector, in academia, in the public sector, and with a number of other um, uh, groups of people that FAO has worked with, collaborated with, to develop these tools to be used um, by the affected countries. So, what are these tools? We can kind of group them a little bit, and let me first start talking about tools that can be used in the field by the teams, by the national um, survey and control teams in each country. And so for this, we developed three new apps to collect data in real time and transmit it to their national locus um, centers. And this data, of course, is very important for planning um, uh, the survey and the control operations. And it feeds into that global early warning system um, that is operated by FAO. So here we have a mobile app uh, for Android and soon for the iPhone called eLocus 3M. We have a, a GPS app that works on a GPS and we have an internet form that can work on anyone who has internet connectivity. And all of this allows for the standard um, collection uh, of data. <coughs> In addition, we've developed a drone that survey teams can use um, out um, in the field to help expand the areas that they can cover. And I'll talk a little bit about these very important field tools um, in a few minutes. In addition, we have um, developed new satellite-based remote sensing products. So we have updated the vegetation imagery to that of the highest possible resolution. Um, but using, of course, satellites um, that provide enough scenes, enough coverage, enough passes um, every, every day or every week to provide a reliable product. In addition, uh, we have two new products that help to estimate soil moisture that is absolutely um, critical for um, desert locust breeding. We have one that detects the soil moisture under the ground and we have another one that forecasts soil moisture up to 15 days um, in advance. So these are added tools uh, to uh, analyzing the current situation, um, understanding its uh, developments and guiding um, teams in the field. In addition, we make use of several models, um, models to uh, predict up to six months in advance uh, the performance of uh, rainfall, whether it'll be above average, below average, or about average. And these are updated every month. We use, I use models uh, to uh, estimate the trajectory of swarm migration, either forward or backward in time, to uh, better understand the current situation and predict its um, developments. I also use a dispersal model, which is similar to a trajectory model, but it um, disperses the swarm kind of like a cloud rather than a specific from point A to point B. And lastly, we're investigating the use of 3D migration models to help us better understand how swarms migrate, especially in mountainous areas, um, often very common along the Red Sea in Ethiopia and in Yemen. In addition to field tools, the remote sensing and the models that we've developed, 
we also have developed new systems. And this is absolutely critical <coughs> for improving um, Desert Loka's monitoring and response. So we have developed um, what we call um, uh, Earth Ranger, which um, basically is like a digital control tower to um, manage all the aerial assets, aircraft that are used um, during um, survey and control campaigns. We have centralized all of the data coming from the field, the field data from the survey and the control operations into a um, global data cube that then feeds in to the GIS um, that I use for the global monitoring and, and that the countries use for their national um, analysis and planning purposes. All of the data now is um, uh, freely available in uh, open access for non-commercial use to researchers and the general public in the, in the Locus Data Hub. And then, of course, during campaigns, we have an operations dashboard to, to show us the progress and the status of, of the current operations. So let me just focus now on a few of those 16 innovations. And I would like to start with the eLocus 3 because this is absolutely critical in terms of digital tools and high quality data in real time from the middle of nowhere to the decision makers in the country. So here on the left hand side you can see the traditional tool that has been in use um, since 2015, the eLocus 3 tablet. <coughs> and we have now modernized this tool and expanded it to two new tools. The smartphone app, eLocus 3M, which is developed with FAO and Penn State University in the U.S. And this allows um, teams to collect the same data that's on the eLocus 3 tablet, but they can also share it amongst themselves through a chat feature. They can also take um, photos and videos. Um, and we are now developing a, a tasking um, feature that will allow um, the tool to be used by managers to, to basically um, help um, task those teams um, in the field of what to do. And then we have the, the tool on the right. Um, this is a Garmin GPS um, uh, receiver and we've customized this with the help from the Garmin engineers. Uh, to allow um, people to enter the very basic data required um, mainly during emergency operations. So when there are more teams put in the field temporarily, that each one can um, have one of these tools um, and it works everywhere um, and it transmits the very basic data in real time to, for decision making and operations. In addition, we have another new innovation, as I mentioned, the drone, what we call D-Locus. And this is a drone, as you can see, that uh, is portable, very, very rugged, fixed wing. A team can take it out in the field with them, launch it, kind of using a giant rubber band, and it'll fly um, about 80 kilometers. Uh, and during that time, it will map green vegetation. So when it comes back to the team, it hands off a map and that information to the team, the survey team, and they can then navigate precisely and directly to those areas of green vegetation and then use that same drone if they wish to check that for concentrations of locusts, groups of locusts, um, hopper bands or swarms that might be present. All of this is managed um, on the eLocus 3 tablet or by the eLocus 3M um, Android phone. So the, the full planning of the, of the, of the drone um, flight, the operation of the flight and then of course the data afterwards. So here we're trying to make, um, you know, locus surveys, you know, in these huge giant areas, um, a bit more um, systematic, a bit more precise and a bit less random. Um, this is a, a very unique drone. This is not a typical drone you can, you know, buy off the, off the shelf. Um, this has been developed customly um, by FAO in partnership with the HEMAV um, Foundation um, in Spain. The third innovation that I wanted to focus on briefly then is something called Earth Ranger. What do I call the, the digital control tower? In the past, um, during survey um, and aerial um, control um, campaigns, uh, mainly in outbreaks and upsurges and plague periods, um, we, we often relied on aircraft, but we had no way to, to systematically um, kind of organize all of those operations. 
Um, in the past um, two years, we had up to 28 aircraft flying simultaneously in East Africa, undertaking survey and control operations. So you can imagine that there is a great need to know exactly where all those aircraft were at any single moment of time, to see where they have flown, to see where they have sprayed, to see where the, the necessary resources are on ground, such as the, the pesticide and the warehouses and the, and the support vehicles. All of this now um, can be seen on kind of a custom GIS in real time, uh, what we call Earth Ranger. And this is a system um, that has proven uh, to be very, very effective. We used it in Kenya, in uh, Somalia, and Ethiopia to manage much better than we have in the past um, these aerial control um, campaigns. So we plan to um, continue to use this system in the future whenever aircraft are, are needed. And the great thing about this system is that all of that field data using those tools that I've just shown you feed directly into this system in real time. So the supervisors, the decision makers on the ground, um, they have immediate information in order to make the best decisions possible. So these 16 innovations that I've described to you, this is how they fit then into the FAO Global Desert Locus Early Warning System. The system that FAO has been operating since the late 1970s and that we continue to update um, and integrate with the latest cutting edge innovative tools every year. So if we start kind of from the left to the right, <coughs> obviously we're starting in the field. So there you see the, the complement of the field tools that are now available and that are used um, mainly by the frontline countries, but they're also available during emergencies to the invasion countries to collect and record and transmit um, observations and field data in real time to the decision makers. And also then uh, for my purposes or FAO's purposes for early warning. So that's the eLocus 3 suite of tools. That's supplemented by the Earth Ranger system, which I've just mentioned to you during um, uh, control operations and aerial operations, and further supplemented by the use of the D-Locus drone in the field by survey teams to cover a much larger area. So that's all the field side of, of, of the um, early warning system. All of that data from those uh, input sources flow um, through uh, to the, the centralized point in a country, um, in, the, in the National Locus Center. Uh, and there, they're using a, a custom GIS called Ramses GIS to manage all of that data, to analyze it, and to use it for planning purposes. From there, that data flows into a centralized global Locus data cube that contains the data, the survey and control data of all of the countries. And then, um, from that cube, that data is disseminated to, um, to FAO, to my office, uh, where I use it, of course, for um, uh, situation analysis, assessment, um, early warning, and forecasting. It's also available to researchers who might want to use it for modeling purposes or other non-commercial um, activities. Now, in my case, um, in the center there, using the GIS, um, I'm, uh, of course, uh, making use of all that field data coming through the data cube, but I'm also supplementing it with the remote sensing imagery, uh, imagery to detect rainfall, green vegetation, and soil moisture. And this is much the same that is being done in each country, in each of the frontline countries as well. But in addition, of course, I make use of those models of the seasonal uh, rainfall prediction six months in advance, the trajectory, dispersal, and 3D models for migration. So all of those inputs from the field, from the models, from the satellites, um, go into the GIS for the analysis. And, and of course, it's just not pushing a button, but uh, you know, it's a lot of experience and intuition that is added, that we add as FAO value to all of this to produce a meaningful outputs. Um, and in this case, of course, it's, you're familiar with the monthly bulletins, the six-week forecasts, the, the Locust Watch updates, um, and then, as I mentioned, the availability of the data on the Locust Hub, 
as well as the status of the current operations in the field through a dashboard. <coughs> so with that, I, I j would just like to, to finish and conclude by providing you a few very useful links. Uh, first is the, is the link to, to the eLocus 3M app. There you can see it. It's available on the Google Play Store, and later this year it will be available on the App Store for, for iPhones. In addition, in case you're not familiar with it, the one-stop shopping place for everything you want to know about De Desert Locus, including the latest on the situation, the latest forecasts, um, photos of the upsurge, publications, reference material, training material, um, more details on everything that I showed you today, is available on the FAO Locus Watch website. And lastly, by all means, if you have any further questions or if you would like to contact me, you can reach me by email and I'll reply. Thank you very much and I wish you uh, uh, a very nice day.